As R is built for analyzing large data, we must learn how to handle a sequence of numbers or a matrix of numbers. Let's first look at a sequence of numbers stored in a vector. Instead of storing a single numeric value, we can create a vector consisting of multiple numeric values by using a function c. I first create a vector v1, and another vector 2 consisting of three numeric values. This function can also be used to combine two vectors such as v1 and v2 into a variable v3. When we have a vector with a more than one value, we can subset a vector using a square brackets. Enter an index within a square brackets following a variable to retrieve a single value corresponding to this index. Here, we look at v3, and we only want to get the second element. Similarly, you may use a sequence of indexes to retrieve a sequence of values corresponding to those indexes. Here, we can look at the second and third elements of vector v3. Lastly, you can store the output of subsetting into another variable. We can create v3 underscore sub and store the second and third elements of the vector v3. A lot of statistical programming in R rely on mathematical operations applied to a vector or a matrix. Basic calculator-like functions may be applied to all elements in a given vector. We can add numeric value 2 to a vector v1, and we can also take a function sign and apply to a vector v1. Now we have a vector which consists of multiple numeric values and math operations that work element-wise. If needed, we may apply an operation on a subset of vector. We can apply sine function to a vector v1, but we will only specify second element to be inputted. Note that an equivalent result can be obtained by firstly applying a desired math operation on a vector and retrieving a subset of the result. Here, we can apply a sine function to v1. And after having applied sine function, we can look at the only the second value. You can also perform operations between two vectors. If two vectors are of the same length, corresponding elements will be used. We can multiply v1 with v2. See that the first element of v1 and then first element of v2 were multiply, resulting in the first element of the output. The second element of v1 and the second element of v2 were multiplied, resulting in the second element of the output, and so on. A dot product or an inner product, which is a sum of the products of corresponding elements in two different vectors, can be computed. A dot products require two vectors must have the same length. Otherwise, you will get an error. When in doubt, check the length of a vector. We can look at the length of v1, which is 3. And we can also look at the length of v3, 
which has a length of 6. You may wonder what happens when you apply a math function to a character variable we made previously. Conveniently, R will prohibit you from using math operations on a character vector since it simply does not make sense. For example, we have a chv2, and if we try to add number 10, it will give you an error. However, it may not be so obvious whether a variable is numeric or not. You can verify the class of a variable by using a function class. Class of v2 is numeric, whereas class of chv2 is a character. Some numeric value may be stored in a character vector. For example, patient numbers could be simply stored for an identification purpose, and years may be used as ordinal categories. Whether to assign a number 42 versus a character 42 is entirely up to the context. For example, we can create a variable v4 and assign number 10 and number 42. Note that the double quotation marks make it a vector with the characters. And since R thinks v4 is a character vector, any attempt to apply a math operation will give an error. For example, v4 divided by 10 does not, does not work. If you like to use numeric values in a character vector, we can tell R to treat v4 as numbers. Now we can check class of v4, which has changed to numeric. Now we can apply any math operations that we learned previously, and it does not give an error. Of course, this forcefully changed the class, and therefore you should be careful in using this function. The function summary provides an easy way to get the feel of data. For a numeric vector, we get six descriptive statistics. When we put summary of v3, we get mean, median, mean, max, and many other summary statistics. Depending on the class, summary provides different outputs. When we apply summary, to chv2, which was a character vector, we get a different descriptive summary. R includes a number of built-in functions to compute various statistics. Many of these are only applicable to numeric values. We can take a mean of vector v3, variance of v3, quantile of v3, which provide 0th, 25th, 50th, 75th, and 100th quantile. Other widely used functions include sum of v3, median of v3, SD standing for standard deviation, maximum, or minimum. Elements in a vector have names, which you can look up by function called names. Null here implies that elements in v3 currently do not have names. We can assign names to, say, vector v2 by providing a character vector cat, dog, and rat. We can look at v2 to find the names, and we can also extract 
simply the names of V2.